Away from Texas. Yes, sir. Watch you every single day. Nobody lays it down like Uncle Neely and the pregame show. Neely, the pregame show behind the scenes of everything. And why does he get that kind of access? Why does he get that kind of access? Because trust is involved. You would never get the kind of access you desire unless there's trust and relationship. Trying to put your phone What's up, everybody? Who's part of our Buffs team? Uh, blessings to you, to Coach Prime, Coach Shermer, Coach Livingston, all the coaches, strength and conditioning staff, to the trainers, equipment managers, to everybody who's part of our Buff Nation. God bless you. May God keep you. Last but not least, to the players of the Colorado Buffaloes. Listen, Coach Prime gave me an assignment for this opening day of camp to get our minds right foundationally and spiritually for the season. Uh, the team is coming together for the first day of the camp. And I thought about uh, the things that Coach Prime and I have been discussing about how do teams come together and what are some of the nuances of a team coming together and working for a common goal. And I thought about the first team that I ever really see from a human perspective in scriptures. Coach Prime has been talking about the team that came together, a team that's put together by God and if you let me contextualize it, God is the owner of this team, and yet the general managers, it would be, the staff that put the team together would be a man named Adam and his wife named Eve. They were responsible for putting together the first team to carry out God's mission in the human race. And as a part of that team that Adam and Eve put together, they came together to create that team, uh, the first person that they selected, if would, or came out of that team, uh, a five star, we call him, first round draft pick. His name was Cain. They thought that he would make it, if it would, to the Hall of Fame. So they named him Cain because Cain meant a deliverer. It meant the begotten one. It meant the Messiah. They named their first son Cain because they thought he was going to be the one. It's going to be all American. He was going to be the one that was going to be in the cover of every magazine. He was going to be in EAW Sports, ENA Sports. He was that guy, Cain. But then the second pick, uh, his brother, they named him Abel. Abel, whose name meant vanity or it really meant nothing. Abel was the one who was the walk on. Abel was the two star. Abel was the one without a lot of high expectations. Abel was the one that people would have thought would have been slow. Didn't have a high 40 time, couldn't bench press 225 three times. Cain was the one who was esteemed. Cain is the five star plus. Abel is the one who badly made it to the team. And they were there to bring out the wishes of God, to bring sacrifices to God. It's interesting that they both on the same team, which was a sacrifice for God, but they played different positions. Cain, if we would, played on offense. He was a farmer. Cain played on defense, if would. Uh, Abel played on defense, if would. He was a shepherd. Same team, different positions. It's important to know that even though you work in different positions, different position rooms, that we still have a responsibility to carry out what the playbook is that's been implemented by our owner and by the general manager. They were supposed to sacrifice unto God, to bring God their very, very, very best. Because if you're doing something for God, or anytime you're doing anything that's positive, you want to sign your work with excellence. Whatever you do, you want to make, make sure you autograph it with excellence. Well, it's strange because in our time, Cain, who would have been the five star one, Cain, who was the one who was the all American, Cain, the first round draft choice, as a farmer, he decided to bring his sacrifice of the fruit of the ground. He wouldn't even pick it off of the vine, he took the easy route. He didn't give his best. He gave God what was the least likely amount of effort. He gave unto God that which didn't require much. Real easy to just pick something that had already fallen. So the first round draft pick, Cain, the deliverer, the one they thought would be the best one, gave half-hearted effort. But then Abel comes, the one they called nothing, the one they didn't think was going to do anything, the three star, the two star, the one who wasn't highly recruited, the one who walked on, the one who was, took the juco route. He brought God, the Bible says, the best and the firstlings of his flock. He, he brought God his best. And what happened? The owner, God looked at what Cain did, the five star. God looked at what Abel did, the two star, the walk on, 
the Juco transfer, the one who barely made it. And the Bible says that God rejected the effort of the five star. He received the effort of the walk on. God rejected the one who was highly rated by rivals and ESPN and 247 Sports and On3. God rejected that from Cain because Cain thought he was all that. Cain thought he was just going to walk into camp and a starting position was going to be given. So God rejected that from Cain. But here's a strange thing. He received it from Abel. Even though they had different positions, they brought different things. But because Abel, the, the one who was the walk on, the juco, the least likely to succeed, the one who barely made it, was not highly touted, touted but because he brought his best, the Bible says that God received from Abel. He rejected from Cain. The question I want to ask you today, fellas, as camp starts today, which one will you be? Are you going to be Cain, the one with all the talent in the world, but you act like you're sick and hide in the bathrooms? Are you going to be Cain, the one who has all the talent, all the ability in the world, but when the game starts on Saturday, you watch zero hours of film all week? Are you going to be Cain, the one who has a bad attitude, doesn't push himself to maximum effort because you think you're all that because of what you did in high school? Are you going to be able, glad just to be emboldened to have this opportunity? Are you going to be able, glad to have the opportunity for the world to watch you, all four networks, to be able to be a part of something historic? Are you going to maximize your talents like Abel and follow the playbook to a T and bring your best effort every day for the coach, for Coach Prime, for Coach Shermer, for Coach Livingston, for Coach Flea, for Coach Mathis, for Coach Lewis, for Coach Phil, for Coach Sapp, for Coach Hart? Are you going to bring your effort every play, every down like Abel so that what you're doing, God knows he's given you the best, and you want to return that and reciprocate that by making sure you maximize that opportunity. But well, strangely enough, the scriptures tell us in Genesis chapter 4 that these guys who planned for the same team, had the same playbook, had the same opportunity, but because Cain wanted to cakewalk and take the easy route, he got jealous of Abel because Abel's gift was respected. Abel's sacrifice, Abel's effort was respected, it achieved him greatness in the sight of God. Cain, strangely enough, got so mad because his gift was rejected, his sacrifice was rejected, and Abel's was received, that Cain got jealous and tried to fight and killed his own brother. How many of you gonna get jealous if somebody else succeeds you or exceeds you because they put their effort in and learn the playbook and showing up every play, every down? How many of you are going to get mad in September when you're not in the starting lineup on the first two units because you've been playing around, chasing girls, or trying to smoke that gas and trying to get some, instead of being serious about what you're supposed to do? Are you going to be Cain, who gives half-hearted effort, or are you going to be able to maximize your gifts because you want to please the owner? Strange enough, Cain was toxic for their locker room. So toxic for their locker room that Cain killed his brother Abel. But what I love about it is although they both had the same playbook for the same owner with the same opportunity, Cain thought that his little pettiness and his messiness, Cain thought to him being toxic, that he was going to get positioned by trying to hurt his brother. But what I love about it the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4 says, by faith, Abel gave his best unto God. And now Abel is called a hero and the first hero in the Heroes Hall of Faith. We hear about the NFL Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio, where the Heroes Hall of Faith is in Hebrews chapter 11. And the first hero, the first ballot, the first entry hero in the Heroes Hall of Faith is not Cain. Is not David, not Abraham, not Moses, not Noah. But guess who the first hero is in God's Heroes Hall of Faith? It is Abel, the one who was named nothing by his parents. It's Abel, the one who was not highly touted by rivals ESPN, 247, or On3 Sports. It was Abel, the one who didn't have 
a 85 rating or 97 speed on the ENA college football game. The one who was the least likely, the least touted, the one who did not come with a bunch of accolades, but because Abel showed up every moment, every time, came to practice early, left late, was prepared and gave his best effort every time, ate right, went to training, took care of his body, because Abel showed up when it was time to show up. Now, as a result, the one who his parents thought was the nothing one, that's why they named him nothing, but the nothing one turned out to be the best one. Hey, we've got this opportunity for the 24-25 football year, but my question in the next 30 days, who will you be? The first round, five-star Kane, who's got all the bitters in the world, but you're so arrogant, stuck on what you did in high school, that you're not bringing your best? Are you gonna be Kane, the top position player in your class, but in missing meetings because you're going to get tattoos? Which, who are you gonna be? Are you gonna be Kane? to not take advantage of this opportunity when the world is watching. Because right now the world is watching. I'm not talking about Ohio State. I'm not talking about Georgia Bulldogs. I'm not talking about the Crimson Tide. I'm talking about the University of Colorado Buffs. You got an opportunity that the world is gonna be watching you when you put that black and gold on. Will you show up like Cain and give the fruit of your ground? Half-hearted effort, slack, Lazy, soft, are you going to be soft or are you going to be like Abel, just glad to be in the room? Don't need all the accolades. Don't need all the attention. Don't have to be highly, don't have to have a bunch of followers or likes on Instagram. But put the helmet, put the helmet, show the pass on. It didn't matter what you did in seven on sevens. The real game takes place starting today once you put the pass on. Are you going to be Cain? and give God nothing, give God the least, or are you going to be able and bring your best every day? If you do that, the possibility of the Heroes Hall of Fame awaits you. The ability to have something that's legendary is waiting for you. Which one are you going to be? I don't know about you, but I'm looking for some ables to support, to undergird the vision of my brother and my friend, Coach Prime. I'm praying for you. I'll be with you. My team and I are praying every Tuesday. I'll be there for the North. I'll be there every game possible. But I want to share this with you. Cain or Abel, the choice is yours. In the words of Shadur, it's perfect timing. Which one will you be? Skull Buffs. Peace.